It's been a hard year, I know, but still. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with a different type of video. In this one, we're gonna do what I would call an anti-haul. All these things you're gonna see, zero out of 10 do not recommend. Do not buy them. These are the things I regret buying this year. If editing Alicia's on her A-game, this will be posted tonight. So it'll be the last video of the year. So happy new year. Whatever time you're watching this, I hope that you're well. I could have done with all this stuff. I wish I had done this video before. I only thought this up of two days ago, but I feel like I should make this an annual thing because every year there's at least a couple things that we buy that we shouldn't have had. Some things we get to return, some things because maybe it costs too much to ship back or the return policy, we gotta keep that ish. So hopefully you haven't bought anything that I bought and you're saving your coins. This is a reminder for me going forward in the new year that I need to be more intentional about where I spend my money. We're gonna start off with the most recent regret. This pair of leggings. If you watched one of my weekly vlogs, if you saw when I unboxed this, I was so excited since the last pair of velvet leggings I had lasted me 12 years. I got them from American Apparel. This is from Naked Wardrobe. Their quality is not bad. The prices are kind of high when you live in Canada though. When I opened up my shipment and I saw this detail, I said, did my blind eyes really play me that bad? Cause this mesh isn't it. I even went on the site after I got these to double check and you can't really tell on the model. Had I known and I been able to see, I wouldn't have purchased these. This is not really my style. It's kind of given tacky. Maybe I'm exaggerating because I thought these were full velvet and they're not what I thought I bought, but this ain't it. This next thing I bought wasn't that expensive, but it cost more to send it back than the refund would be, so it's sticking with me. I got this top from Sable in the summer. You know Sable is one of my favorite boutiques once it gets warm here in the six. This ain't it. I was going for that feminine flirty vibe, but I forgot that I'm the chair captain of the ADBDT committee and I can't fill this out. This isn't an extra small. I would have been better set with a double excess because the excess makes me look like a preschooler trying to wear her parents' clothes. It's a no-go. I don't know what it is with the crop tops this year, but I haven't had the same luck as I usually do. Crop tops and bodysuits are my everyday thing. This is not an everyday piece though. I was hoping it would be, but since the knit material they use is on the cheaper side, it stretches as you wear it. This neckline here droops a little bit, and since it's got the back cut out, you're not supposed to wear a bra with it, so you might give a little nip slip with this. It really sucks because I like the style, I love the color. It's one of those transitional pieces you can wear any type of year, cold summer night, layered in the winter, that type of thing. I can't wear this for more than an hour without it stretching, obviously, and looking super cheap on me, which sucks because J-Lux label is usually really good quality. Another piece from that same shipment is this bodysuit, which I saw and snatched immediately because of the sage color. I've been looking for a top in this color for months, so when J-Lux had that, I had to grab it. When it arrived though, I said this was not meant for me. You see these cups? I used to work at Victoria's Secret. This is easily a 34C. Like I'm eyeing it, it could even be a 34D. This is their smallest size. Why did they just assume that everyone was a 34D? <laughs> My two boobs can fit in one cup. <laughs> I've still worn it since I can't return it. It's a bodysuit, final sale. But I feel fugazi with it when I put it on because this ain't me. <laughs> this is a build a body. I already spoke about this brand in a completely dedicated video. If you wanna check that out, you can click here. But we're just gonna speak on Skims for a bit. I bought this set, super excited because you know, Skims is that luxe lounge where this is so comfortable. But as I mentioned in that video, I was worried about the pilling because the texture of the material is so soft. I wish I was wrong, but I wasn't. After one wear, it looked like this. I did what you should do when you spend a lot of coins on clothes like this and I snapped a pic and sent it into the company. The lady said, you shouldn't have washed it in the machine. I said, I haven't washed it yet. This is from wearing it one night in my sheets. I don't sleep in burlap sheets. So this shouldn't be happening. These are a pretty penny too. If I were you, there's some things I'd recommend from Skims. These ain't them. On Kim's neck just for a bit. This is from her classic cotton collection. The skim stands, I don't want no smoke, but I just gotta speak on the truth. These are giving Hanes material. 
If you're gonna buy this boxer brief, get the soft lounge. It feels so incredible. It stretches so well. For the price you're paying, mm -mm -mm -mm. the top, Okay, this is my bad because everyone said the tank ran small and I still went for my true size. I should have gone up a size or is it down a size? I never know which one, but I should have got a bigger size is what I'm trying to say. Every time I wash it, it snaps back, which is a good thing if it was my right size. But usually after a couple wears, I stretch it out so I don't feel like I'm trying to fit into toddler tank. It's so tiny. So about the other set, it's not here. I got rid of it because I tried. Trust me, the first time I washed it, I said, what is this? It had specks on it. And I realized other YouTubers were complaining about their discoloration. I washed it following the care directions. I sent a picture in. I don't remember if they refunded me or gave me a 20% off discount. I shouldn't even bought these after that happened, but hey. What else happened with that pair? They pilled, I dyed them brown, the brown run and messed up my sheets. That's my bad, so I can't even blame skims. I dyed them black, but then the band part didn't take. So now I have rose clay brown and black skims. It wasn't a look. <laughs> I had no business buying that set, and that was my sign. Close, bad, but not that bad. Last year, I only think I regretted two things. So this is more than last year, but it could have been way worse. Moving on to some random things, let's do home decor. Two things I regret, one I was able to send back. Still waiting on my refund for that. They're trying to play me, even though I sent them my tracking, didn't pay for my return shipping. I didn't know companies through Amazon did that, but that's bad customer service. That thing was so flimsy, it's the big spice rack jar thing. Mm -mm. No, hopefully I can return, but if I can't, I mean, I'll make it work. The problem with this is I'm not trying to battle the bottle every time I need to get my brown sugar out. Even now, <laughs> ugh, if I had nails, because I'm going through a dark time with my nails, this would snap them. To close it, it's another fiasco. I feel bad since if you watch the vlog, you know, when I bought this, an old man was eyeing it in my hand and I almost gave it to him like, Maybe you need this more than me. But I thought, no, I picked it up first and there's other ones, but he was being so picky. Oh, that one is half a centimeter longer. And he had a ruler with them. <laughs> so I said, I'm gonna keep this cause you're different. But now I wish I left it in the store and he could have bought it cause it's too much struggle to open and close. This year, more than any other year, I've had a lot of tea regrets. I love me some David's tea. It was so much easier picking the perfect tea when you could smell them in the store. But since most of the stores closed during the panorama, I've been online shopping. This right here should have been perfect. It's a seasonal tea, eggnog matcha. You know me, it's always a matcha moment. <clears throat> Not this moment. This smells weird and I thought, you know what? Once you froth it, get it right, it'll be okay. Nope. The only way that it's bearable to taste is if you mix it with literal eggnog to mask the flavor of the fake eggnog. It's so gross. And I love eggnog, but that's gross. Another seasonal tea that sucked was candy cane matcha. It doesn't taste horrible, but it doesn't really have any flavor. This one right here has too much flavor. It's giving everything that no one ever wanted. This is, sorry, I need to see because I wrote it bigger here. Blue magic matcha. I'll. <laughs> I'll take the blame for this one. I didn't read the description. I thought it was spirulina and matcha, which would have been chef's kiss. This is blue raspberry matcha. Why? This is giving kids Kool-Aid. I don't want that in the morning. Confetti cupcake. I mean, I figured it'd be sweet, but this is sickly. There's also no flavor to the tea, so it tastes like you're drinking sugar with a weird film on top. If I had read the reviews, I would have known that because all the reviews say that. For the first time in a long time, I don't have any makeup regrets, just one beauty tool, this bootleg beauty blender. At all cost, don't let the good price fool you. Sometimes it's worth spending the extra money so something actually lasts. The last two of these came in a set of three for $9, broke within two or three uses, Busted worldwide, cracked, crumbled. I said, why are these disintegrating before my eyes? I shouldn't admit this on YouTube, but my beauty blender, like the actual beauty blender I've had for a year. I barely use it because I only wear makeup when I film, so I do it maybe once a week and I sterilize it every single use. At least I know when I'm spending that 26 plus tax versus the $9 for this, it's gonna last me a bit. 
This is something I would definitely pass on. Let's do a poll. How many of you would rather penny pinch and have something that's easily disposable or spend a little extra coin and have something that lasts a little bit of time? Not talking about a sponge, just in general. I'd love to know, let me know down below. This literally cost a dollar, but I still wanted to mention it to you. It was such an unnecessary purchase. I have the worst luck. My last set of headphones, I broke the case. So let me order an AirPod case right away. When this arrived, I said, what possessed me to order this gold member looking <laughs> I put it on to show you guys in the vlog, but what you didn't see is how long it took me to take it off to put on the case that I prefer on. This really stays on, so that's a 10 out of 10, but the look of it and the feel of it is giving cheap and I'm not, uh-uh. It really is a commitment because it stays click on. As a proud plant mom, these two are embarrassing. I bought this a few weeks ago. You, you've been asking me where your plants at because it used to be flourishing back here. This is what's been happening. These are two of the few plants that haven't made it into the new year. I don't know. It's been a hard year, I know, but still. I keep these by the windowsill in some small hope in a feat of fate that one day when I open the blinds, they're gonna be back to life, but why am I holding on to this? Why did it only survive two weeks? This one survived a month, but you can see I don't know if it's gonna make it. Hope is that this one makes it through. I'll keep you posted. Clearly I've succeeded at being a plant murderer. We're gonna wrap it up here. The way I see it, yeah, it sucks that I wasted money on a few things, but in the grand scheme of things, this is to remind me to be intentional about how I spend my money going forward. And I hope it's a reminder for you too. If you've bought anything this year you regret, share it with the community down below. Let me know. <laughs> All in all, I'm grateful that my only regrets are the things I showed you in this video. As far as decisions and choices, I'm content. I can live with them. I'm just happy that this year's over because I don't know about you, but this year was worse than 2020. So I'm looking forward, hopefully, to the next year being better than this one. I hope that you guys have a happy, healthy, and safe new year. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.